Okay. So we have started recording and now we will move on to the triple five IC. Okay. So let me go to the data sheet. In fact, let us go to the any triple five data sheet. All right. File open. So I've already created a file because this does take a bit of uh, drawing to do it. So let's let's first look at the data sheet. Okay, let's first take a look at the data sheet. Okay, so that a triple five is a precision timer circuit. And in many mechatronics applications, you do need a very precise turning on, turning off. Apart from turning on and turning off, you also need a precise pulse generator or a PWM generator. In your DIY lab, have you heard of the term PWM? Pulse width modulation. Yeah, the pulse width modulation. You heard of this? No. Yes, sir. What has yes. happened, I think, is due to so many sections. Some of the sections have covered it. Some of the sections might not have covered. It. So we will discuss about that as well. Uh, so anyway, so it it gives you precise timing from microseconds to hours. It has various modes of operation. You can have a stable operation, monostable operation. There is another operation called as bistable operation. You can have an adjustable duty cycle. So a duty cycle is something which uh, is terminology from PWM. And it can source or sync up to 200 milliamperes. So that's good. Uh, and the applications which have been mentioned over here are fingerprint biometrics, iris biometrics, RFID readers. Apart from this, there are many other applications and they find applications in automobile uh, circuitry in even in spacecrafts. Okay, so it's a very, very, very widely used. IC. In many household electronics, in many toys, you will find this IC as well. So this simplified schematic, forget about it for, for now, but it does give a very good broad overview of the different uh, sort of components that go into it. And I've drawn them separately as well. We will discuss it using that. But before going there, I just want to show, it, show you how it looks like. So it looks like, so this kind of packages, uh, they are called as dip packages. So this is a SE triple five. We don't bother with this. We're gonna deal with any triple five, okay? And it has eight pins. OK, it has eight pins and the pin numbering starts from the notch on the left side. So there is a notch on the chip. Okay. So there's a notch on the chip. Uh, yeah, so there's a notch over here. And so the pin numbering starts from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there are eight pins and the eight pins are classified as following. So we have the ground pin. We have the trigger pin. We have the output pin. We have a reset pin. We have a control voltage pin. We have a threshold pin. We have a discharge pin. And finally, we have a VCC pin. That is the power input to this IC. OK. So, so that THRES, what is that? It's a yeah. threshold pin. We will come into it. And when we do the diagrams, we will go into that. So for now, you just need to know that it's known as a threshold pin. Okay. And so the maximum supply voltage can go up to 18 volts, but we will run it on 12 volts. So it can go from anywhere from 5 volts to 18 volts. Okay. The minimum is typically 5 volts. Uh, 
the output current it can so this output pin that you have over here you can source a current of 225 milliamperes from it okay so it can supply a maximum current of 255 milliamperes and the plus minus says that not only can the device source you some current it can also sink some current which is good so the recommended operation conditions vcc supply voltage should be between 4 and 1/2 volts to 16 volts fine so for now forget about this forget about this in fact we don't need all this i will discuss the functional block diagram as i have drawn it but you will see it's literally the same thing and they have given some sample circuits which you can use as a monostable operation these are the waveforms you will obtain using the oscilloscope as well uh, there's the a stable operation the same output voltage you will be able to obtain and we will discuss this circuit okay we will dis discuss this circuit the whole point of this particular lab session is to understand how this circuits work and i will show you uh, two breadboard circuits that i have made and their waveforms as well um apart from this the data sheet also lists a typical application uh, for this as well so a typical application would be a missing pulse detector you can imagine that a missing pulse detector is very important for many digital electronics applications as well uh you have pulse width modulation this circuit if we have time today we will discuss it today itself or we can do it in the beginning of the next class typical applications you can have uh, a modulation you can have um, uh, frequency modulation of the signal so this is typically the case for radio waves you know how radio waves are transmitted right they can have amplitude modulation or frequency modulation so there's a modulation circuit and there's a demodulation circuit okay modulation voltage output voltage capacitor voltage you can have a sequential timer so various uh, so various mechanical instruments where you know that this has to turn on then this has to turn on while that thing is on this has to turn off so you can do such kinds of sequential time then yeah so these are some of the applications with the data sheet itself gives and it's um, of course in the end it's all showing how you can purchase what kind of boxes they will sell you in and this these are quite important okay what kind of boxes what kind of tape diameters who can guess why it is important for us as a user to know what kind of tape and reel they are going to sell it in who can guess uh, so to identify counterfeit products from real ones no 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 the the counterfeiter will make the counterfeit as to scale no problem sir like what does the question actually mean sir why why is this information given in a data sheet this uh, so i'll tell the reason this kind of reels are fed into pick and place machines okay pick and place machines are machines which automatically pick up the ic from the reel it will place it on the circuit and it will solder it for you so the machine needs to have the information about what kind of reel diameter it is so that it can it doesn't overrun the the tape and not pick anything okay the machine has to exactly put suction on this and place it on the uh, circuit board okay so those kind of machines are called as pick and place machines and they have sprocket holes as well so pick and place machines have a very distinct uh, sort of mounting holes and all this so you need to the company has to specify all this okay so there's a bunch of other dimensions also given so if you want to design your own pcb which makes use of a 555 timer circuit you need to know these dimensions because without that you will not be able to sort of actually physically design the circuit okay so these are all the cad drawings engineering drawings that are given 
all right so now forget about all this a lot of cat drawings over here so now let's turn our attention to the document that i have made so the na triple five has eight pins they are numbered from one two three four five six seven eight and there's a notch on top okay so internally possibly i can i mean this is how the internal connections look like don't have to worry about this okay so there are five resistors connected across vcc and ground uh, not five resistors. there are three resistors connected across vcc and ground and the value of each resistor is 5k 5 kilo ohm 5 kilo ohm 5 kilo ohm okay so three 5k resistors it sort of gives you the name triple five so if you have vcc and ground like this and if you have connected three 5k resistors what are the voltages at this point and this point uh, sir vcc by 3 and 2 vcc by 3 all right so this will be vcc twice vcc over 3 and this will be vcc over 3 so it's a very simple voltage divider circuit so let me take so this part this yellow highlighted part is the voltage divider all right then the voltage divider feeds this 2 vcc by 3 and vcc by 3 into what is known as a comparator circuit so this and this they form two comparator circuits so the orange thing they are called as comparators and we will discuss them but it is important for us to know what they are called okay then after the comparator we have what is called as an sr flip flop okay so this particular thing is called as a sr flip flop that's what it is called then you have what is called as an output inverter so this thing is an output inverter and this reset pin is connected to the sr flip flop okay so the control pin is connected to the 2/3 voltage reference point so from this entire circuit what can you conclude so the output pin is where you take the output the reset pin if you uh, if you put it to ground if you take the reset pin and if you put it to ground then this entire triple five will reset okay that is why it is called as a reset pin. you have the trigger pin which acts as an input to one of the legs of one of the comparators and the discharge pin or rather the threshold pin is one of the inputs to the other comparators so the trigger and the threshold they are the inputs so the threshold and the trigger they are the inputs and the discharge pin is also a kind of input so these blue things are the input for now all you need to know is the output of the flip flop is connected to the base of an internal transistor 
the output of the flip flop is connected to the base of an internal transistor so if the transistor remains off if the transistor remains off the discharge pin and ground are not connected if the base of the transistor stays off then the transistor is also off and the discharge pin and the ground are not connected however if the base of the transistor is on then the discharge pin and the ground pin become shorted and whatever is connected to the discharge pin can discharge via this discharging transistor to ground what i mean to say is imagine i have connected i have connected a capacitor like this and this capacitor is charged okay and i have removed the vcc so this stays charged when the discharging capacitor turns on then this capacitor can discharge via the discharge pin through the discharge transistor and it will go to ground so this is the way for discharging something so are the different functional blocks clear to you we will discuss more about what a comparator is and what a sr flip flop is in a while but for now are the different parts of the 555 uh, clear to you so can you explain about again about the reset about reset one rst one so the reset pin is nothing but you know you it's like a reset button for your phone when you when you press the reset button everything switches off and starts from fresh so when the reset pin is put to ground and taken away from ground it will reset so it's like if i were to connect a switch like this i would take this when i connect this the whole circuit would reset when i take it out it will then function after a fresh reset okay yes sir right. uh, sir uh, the voltage divider part yes a uh, won't the voltage is across it be affected by the other parts of the circuit or like will it always stay independent of the maybe good question and the answer is it will not be affected by anything else solely because of the property of a of an operational amplifier so we will come to operational amplifiers uh, in after a few more lectures but this comparator is essentially an operational amplifier and it has infinite input impedance meaning there is no current draw there is no current draw going in to an ideal comparator okay so if there is no current draw then there is no question of this voltage level changing so this remain fixed okay sir any other question before we proceed all right let's let's proceed so over here i have drawn the simplified schematic of the diagram mentioned above and oh sorry so this is the voltage divider part okay so the voltage divider goes between pin 8 and pin 1 it goes between pin 8 and pin 1 okay then what was the second component we have the two comparators so this part and this part they are the comparators so essentially are the comparators then what was the other thing that i highlighted the output this is the output inverter so flip flop you have the flip flop so what color did i use for the flip flop pink so this is the flip flop and in the flip flop the there is a q 
and there is a Q bar. So Q is having no connection. So Q bar is going to the output. Okay. And yeah. So what else was there? There was the discharge transistor to ground. This is a discharge transistor. So discharge transistor to ground. Okay. So what does a comparator do? A comparator has two components. One is the non-inverting component and one is the inverting component. Okay. A comparator has two legs. It has a non-inverting leg and an inverting leg. And there is an output to this as well. So basically you need two inputs and you will get one output. How do you figure out what input will be uh, rather given certain inputs what the output will be now if you have the situation where the non inverting input is higher than the inverting input. Okay, the non inverting input is higher than the inverting input then the output of this comparator is going to be high. Vice versa, if the inverting input, the voltage signal at the inverting pin, if it is higher than the non inverting input voltage, then the output of the comparator will remain low. Let's take an example. If the voltage input at the non inverting pin is 5 volts, Whereas the voltage input at the inverting pin is one volt. What will be the output? The output will be a logical high. On the other hand, if the non inverting input is five volts, whereas the inverting input is six volts, it means that the logical output of the comparator will be low. Is it clear what a comparator does? Yes, sir. All right. Now let us go to what a SR flip flop does. Uh, sir, what is a non inverting and inverting input? That I did not understand. They are just two pins of a comparator. For now, you need to know that there are two pins of a comparator and the terminology comes from operational amplifiers which we will cover in a separate lab. So it is not important okay. for you to know what an in inverting input does, what a non inverting input does. It is not important for you to know right now. But you just need to know there are two inputs VNI and VI. That's it. OK. OK, sir. All right. So yeah, so the flip flop. So the flip flop the SR flip flop has four pins. One is a S pin. One is a R pin. So these are the two input pins and the two output pins are Q and Q bar. As you can imagine, Q bar is the complement of Q. OK. And the RS flip flop, it is easy to remember uh, or the SR flip flop. So S stands for set and R stands for reset. This reset is not to be confused with the reset pin of a triple five timer. So we can build the following truth table. We can build the following truth table that when R is zero and when S is one, meaning the set pin is high, but the reset pin is low. Then what happens? Then Q is set to one because you are setting the output to be one. So now what will be the conjugate the Q bar? It will be zero. So this is like a logic level. I mean the SR flip flop is basically not working with continuous voltages. It gives you a logical high or logical low. Okay. Sir, I'm going to ask some doubts, sir. Yeah. 
So actually, as the functioning of this RS flip flop is like when R is zero, like low, and S is uh, high, then we are getting Q as one and Q bar is zero. So this like somehow function is similar as comparator. So can we not use comparator here? Like no, no, no. I don't. We are so the taking only one pin no, from RS flip flop. So internally it does contain all those things. So let me show the internal diagram. We have not given the internal diagram, is it? So internally, it does contain a bunch of. Uh, so actually, each of these uh, comparators is comprised of many BJTs. Some of them in Darlington configurations, and so basically, the internal circuitry of the flip flop also looks something like that. Okay. There is no. I mean, you cannot distinguish between anything. But logically, it is broken up into that for a reason which will be clear when we consider the S table and then. By stable circuits. Okay, sir. So, so when you say that the output would be a logical hierarchy like in physical terms, what would be coming out of Q? We we don't have that output. So, whatever the output of Q bar is, that will not be given to us. So, finally, output will be VCC multiplied by either one or zero. This output will be VCC multiplied by one or zero. Whatever comes out logically over here, that will you will simply multiply to VCC. Okay. Okay, sir. So uh, yeah, so we what did we discuss? We discussed uh, the first part. We discussed this, and the other thing is when R is one and S is zero. So R is one. And S is zero. It corresponds to a reset because the reset input is high, and the set input is low. So the thing, the SR flip flop will reset, and the output will be a zero. The output will be a zero, and correspondingly, Q bar will be one. The conjugate. And now here is the difference between a comparator and the SR flip flop when both the inputs are zero. when both the inputs are zero what will happen uh, whatever was the previous configuration of q and q bar that is preserved previous configuration so suppose at a given time uh, suppose r s q q bar is at a given time it is 1 0 0 now suppose r goes to 0 s also is 0 so what will be the output of q and q bar it will be 0 1 only it this will not change because both of them have become zero it will be the previous configuration a very important aspect is it clear sir so this yes. uh, zero zero can be used so that when we want to change the rs configuration we first get it to zero zero and we change uh, the other thing Yes, I mean if you want to do it that way, but the the three circuits that I'm going to show you, they all do it internally. They are very smart circuits. Okay. 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 So this is what SR flip flop does. Very useful to have for logic truth table construction in a circuit. But I mean. if you look at the circuit diagram once again if you look at this diagram once again none of the pins of the sr flip flop are available to you to change meaning the input pins r and s are simply the logic outputs of the comparators yes yes sir they are simply the outputs yes. of the comparators you have no control on what r and s you can set in fact for the first comparator the reference voltage of 2.33 volts is set to the inverting pin yes 
so for the first comparator you have chosen what the reference voltage should be for the inverting pin so this reference chosen for first comparator all right at the same time for the second comparator you have automatically set the non inverting pin with the reference voltage of 1/3 vcc and these voltages are not going to change so the entire operation the entire operation of a triple five circuit then boils down to how you are able to change the inverting rather the non inverting input to the first comparator that is through the threshold pin and how you are able to change the inverting input to the second comparator which is by means of a trigger pin and how you can use the discharge pin to automatically do this switching for you okay this will be what we will be covering in what follows okay that is where the genius of these people lie okay they they created circuits which really do a lot of smart things okay let me just get some water right so the first circuit that we will discuss is uh, the operation as a bistable circuit okay so a bistable circuit yeah so the higher and lower thing that you told us it was there for the comparators or for the is swap like the output of the comparator is also logical high low and the input of the rs flip flop is the logical high low okay sir so first we have the bistable mode of operation so let's see what the deal is so what kind of connections are we looking at now you have to pay close attention okay so over here pin 6 is not connected uh pin 2 is connected to this circuit so vcc or the input voltage is connected to pin 2 so you have this connection going on and you have a switch over here meaning that the voltage at pin 2 will be either vcc when this switch is not on when this switch is off in the off position the voltage at pin 2 will be how much it will be vcc when this switch is on when this switch becomes on what will be the voltage at pin 2 zero zero it will go to ground okay so that is the first thing you need to observe and the second thing is so is that resistance between vcc and that s2 point yeah it, it, it can be anything it's it's known as a pull up resistor okay it can be anything and this resistor is known as a pull up resistor why because under no switching this point 2 is pulled up to to vcc it is pulled up to vcc 
Okay, sir. And there is another kind of resistor which is called as a pull down resistor, meaning when the switch is not pressed, this pin would be pulled down to ground. It's very simple to make it. In fact, you just connect the switch to the. To the other side. So right now, okay. Right now, what is going on? This pin two is at ground voltage. When the switch becomes on, pin two will be at what voltage? VCC, right? Yes, sir. So this resistor would be then called yes. as the pull down resistor. You might have heard of these terms so, in your DIY lab. So, but what is the use of this resistor? Uh, the switching will then do the job, no? Who will do the switching? Oh yes. Sorry. So if there is no resistor over here, how does so you will immediately short? VCC and ground and so all the current will simply go straight through this voltage level will be something between VCC and ground. You understand? If if this resistor is not there. OK, right now it is at, it is at ground. No problem. This is at ground. But when I close this, then what will be the, the voltage over here? Who knows? Do you understand why it is required? Yes. No, this should be clear. I mean, if you have doubt, you ask again. There will be a short circuit. If I close this switch, VCC and ground will short circuit. There will be a lot of current going through. It may damage the power supply. That is all secondary. But what will be the output voltage at two? I mean, we don't know. What will be the? Will it be ground? Will it be VCC? Who knows? Fine. That is why you need this resistor. So the current is also limited when the switch is pressed. The current passing through this also becomes limited. It can be like 5 milliampere or 10 milliampere, whatever it is. At the same time, the voltage levels become well defined. Is it fine what I said? The voltage level will become well defined. Otherwise, it is not well defined. I hope it is clear. I'll just let it be here so that you can look at it later. So I'll just call so, but in the in the left part, mm. the left part, uh, the, this pull-up resistor will not cause potential drop. No, because like I said, the comparator input has infinite resistance. There is no current going here. There is no current going here. If there is no current, if the current is zero, then points two and points eight, that is VCC. Are at the same voltage. Okay, sir. Yes. Sir. Okay. And you have another switch which is between. The reset pin. So this pin over here is the reset pin. So this is pin four. Okay. So pin four. This, this is not going to Q. Q is still open. So this is the reset pin. This is the reset line. Okay. So right now, what is the state of the reset line? The state of the reset line is high. VCC is going to the reset line. OK. Because this switch is not on. If I were to switch on the pin, uh, switch on this switch, what would happen? If I were to switch on this switch, press it. Then what would be the state of point four of pin four? It would go to ground. And so reset would happen. OK. Is it fine? Yes, yes sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So now let us proceed with the rest of the circuit. Alright, so at T equal to zero. 
at t equal to 0. Let's look at comparator 2. So we will first look at comparator 2 at t equal to 0. So at t equal to 0, comparator 2, the inverting input is at VCC because we have not yet pressed the switch S2. So the inverting input is VCC, whereas the non-inverting input is the reference voltage and it is one third VCC. That much is clear? Yes. So what is the output of C2? The positive, the, the non-inverting input is lower than the inverting input. And we have already seen for a comparator, if the non-inverting input is lower than the inverting input, then the output is a low. Okay, so the output will be low. Forget this. So the output will be low. So at t equal to 0, state of S is low. All right. Now what about the first comparator? The input pin of the first comparator has no connection. And if the input pin has no connection, so it will automatically stay low, meaning the non-inverting pin is two thirds of VCC. So, oh sorry, this should be non-inverting. Oh no, sorry, sorry, sorry. The inverting pin is two thirds of VCC. So the inverting pin is two thirds of VCC, whereas the non-inverting pin will be less than two thirds of VCC. If that is the case, because the inverting pin has it a higher voltage, the output of this comparator will also be low. Okay. So at this stage, S is low, R is low. So whatever the previous state was, so we are going to assume that the previous state was zero. So Q would be zero and correspondingly Q bar would be one. So the output is the complementary of Q bar with Q. So the output will be big zero. Look, the Q bar goes to the output inverter and finally you get an output over here. So basically whatever Q is will be the output. So the output is a logical zero, but it will be multiplied by VCC. Forget about that for now. We're looking at the logic. Now, what do we do? We press S2. We will press S2. Let's see what happens when S2 is pressed. When S2 is pressed, pin number two, pin number two, what happens to pin number two? Low. It goes low. So the inverting pin, it goes to ground. So the inverting pin voltage is a big zero. Okay. Whereas the non-inverting pin is still going to remain at one third of VCC. So correspondingly, what is the output of the comparator? High. One. Because the non-inverting is larger than the inverting, S becomes equal to 1. And we are not changing anything in the first comparator, and so R stays 0. So corresponding to S equal to 1 and R equal to 0, what is the state? So S equal to means, S equal to 1 means you set the output to 1, meaning you set Q to be 1. Okay, set reset. So set becomes one. The complementary of Q is zero. And so the output, which is the complementary of Q bar, is also equal to one. So what happens when you press the switch? The output goes high. Okay, when you press the switch, so let me draw it over here. So the output is zero. When you press the switch, the output goes high. So here S2 is pressed. Okay. When you press the switch, 
the output goes high this this much is clear from t equal to 0 to when you press s2 this much is clear yes sir yes sir then what we do is we will now release s2 we press s2 then we release s2 so what happens when we actually release s2 what happens when you release s2 nothing the switch has come out so point so number 2 transformation very good so point 2 goes to high point 2 which is the inverting pin of the comparator 2 it becomes equal to vcc yes but the non inverting pin is still 1/3 of vcc because the inverting voltage is larger than the non inverting voltage the output of comparator 2 that is the input to s it becomes equal to zero it goes to zero but r is always zero what does that mean when r and no s change. both become zero there is no change in q and q bar meaning q will be 1 q bar will be zero output will be equal to 1 and so even when switch 2 is off Switch two becomes on when a, even when it is off. It can switch off at any point. This output remains high. Output remains at VCC. When I say output remains high, it is the high signal, meaning logical one multiplied by VCC. Okay. So now, how do I release this? I mean. of course it has gone to high but i also need to make it come back sometime so you have another switch that switch is connected between this pin 4 and ground the pull up resistor of pin 4 has pulled up pin 4 to vcc and that is why the ic is not reset but the moment i press s1 and release s1 what will happen the moment i press s1 everything will go back to its initial configuration so a little caveat i can take this and i can ground it no problem okay i can take this i don't want to keep it floating i can simply ground it it will not create any issues so the this pin always remains at 0 volt okay okay so forget about that when we press s1 essentially we have taken the reset pin pin 4 and we have put it to ground and we have already seen that when you take the reset pin and pull it down to ground you would start the entire operation again so when you press it the output it goes to ground again and then it will wait until you press switch 2 it will wait until you switch 2 again okay is this bistable mode of operation clear to everyone so did we release s1 or we yes we there? released s1 uh, no no sorry sorry s1 you just press it and release s1 you just press it and release okay you have to just press and release it's like a spring switch okay Okay. Both of these S1, S2 are spring switches. They are not like latch switches. Sir, but for S2, even if we press and release, or if we press and hold, the output would be same. Output because... would be the same. Output would be the same. Correct. But in pressed condition, if someone does mischief and presses S1, so it will sort of mess up the internal table. So that is why you keep both of the, sp uh, the switches as spring switches, like bed switch. it's it's mounted with a spring it press and release like a pen the back of the pen okay so we can't keep both pressed like at the same time you shouldn't you shouldn't it will go into unpredictable behavior so now the question is where is what is the use of this use so imagine i mean a very crude car ignition system okay 
you turn the, the turning the key is like s2 is on no 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 the car ignition is not a, a very good example mm. okay so you have a machine you have a machine where you don't want to keep this switch pressed during its operation so you just press it once and release and the machine starts to work power goes to the machine and in order to stop it there's another spring switch you press this switch it will again stop okay it, it's sort of a circuit required for a latch relay latch relay circuit okay so how do i i draw it so the output pin so from this triple five the output pin so because it can give you 200 milliampere you can directly connect it to uh, the primary of a relay of course it is wise to put a snubber diode across the primary this goes to ground and you have this so when you press switch 2 this press and release switch 2 this stays on so the relay gets powered so the relay gets powered it stays on powered you are not pressing any buttons but everything then the entire circuit is energized okay then once you press s1 again then the relay will deenergize and it will switch off okay this kind of circuit latching relays are very useful in many applications in many control panels you will see such kinds of switches okay essentially any doubt in this i mean very important for you to understand how this has taken place Uh, sir i i had a one doubt in the structure of the timer yeah sir why are we uh, using like an inverter and then like why are we using the q var pin and then using an inverter why can't we directly use the q uh, the output stage i think it consists of an amplifier which inverts the signal there are amplifiers which not only amplify but they invert the signal that is why that output stage is required yes sir but we can directly use an amplifier with q right the internal connections are not done that way for whatever reason maybe they reuse some bjt who knows okay these are logic level so it takes i mean we have not shown the internal circuitry i mean we've just shown that it goes into output and basically power also goes in Okay, VCC also goes into this, but essentially it amplifies. Basically, it, it multiplies with VCC. It can give you a lot of current, but it inverts whatever this is. That is why this output is required. In many amplifiers, this happens. Okay, and that's how that IC is made. Nothing you can do about it. All right, should should we continue? Yes, sir. I got it. So now we have reached the monostable part. Mm, how much time do we have? All right, we have twenty minutes. So let's see. I don't want to rush through this, otherwise an unnecessary complications can arise. All right, so we have come to a monostable. mode of operation of the triple five circuit so what is the circuit diagram looking like in this case so again we have a pull up resistor for pin 2 right so we have a pull up resistor along this now over here the pull up resistor also goes to pin 7 okay so vcc is always this this pin 7 is always at what voltage is, is it at it's not always at but it's connected via a pull up resistor to r1 okay we will we'll see how that helps okay so across this so pin 7 is is tied down to pin 6 pin 7 is tied down to pin 6 which is the non inverting input of the first comparator and pin 6 is also connected to a capacitor which is grounded okay it's also connected to a capacitor which is grounded 
all right now the inverting pin is connected to the pull up resistor and there's a switch which can pull it down to ground all right so let's see how how this can work let's see so initially so initial condition let us look at the two comparators comparator number 2 which is this comparator number 2 so the inverting pin because switch is not pressed so the inverting pin is at vcc whereas the non inverting pin is at the reference voltage of 1/3 vcc okay so because the inverting pin is larger than the non inverting pin what is the output of the comparator low. low so we have a low signal over here very good now let us go to the first comparator first comparator the inverting pin is at the reference voltage of 2/3 vcc so it's 2/3 vcc now what about the non inverting input the non inverting input is connected to this point and we will see so assume that it is less than 2/3 of vcc assume for now that it is less than 2/3 of vcc if the non inverting input is less than 2/3 of vcc that is the inverting input then the output will also be zero so it means that s and r are both at zero and if you imagine that the previous state was also like this then q is zero q bar becomes one now q bar is one this is important it means that the output is going to be zero fine that is fine but when q bar is one the base of the transistor is active okay when q bar is one then the base of the transistor is on what does it mean when the base of the transistor is on it means that this path is conducting it means that we have a way to go from vcc through r1 through the bjt to ground meaning when this is on we will go through vcc to r1 through this to ground okay this line is shorted when this is shorted it will simply go through this it will not try to go through the capacitor so now what is the meaning of this when this is shorted so this entire this entire red curve is at 0 volts this is at ground okay so obviously this is also at ground this is also at ground this is also at ground so it means that point number 6 is at ground meaning we what we had assumed for v non inverting is correct we had assumed that it is less than 2/3 of vcc so it is correct so all this is self consistent this is self consistent meaning the initial condition is self consistent it means the output is going to be zero all right any doubt so far so there would be the forward drop of of the transistor no no right? see this transistor is an internal transistor so we will not account for that we don't have access to the transistor okay okay sir so we will assume that it is at ground vce might be very small for all you know okay so now what we do is the following we will press s1 and release s1 we will press s1 and release s1 so when we press s1 what happens when we press s1 so yes changes to 1 ha huh. so let's try to follow so the inverting input becomes grounded for comparator 2 so the inverting input is grounded whereas the non inverting input is still at the 1/3 vcc reference level as a result the non inverting input is higher than the inverting input and so s becomes 1 okay s becomes 1 whereas for the 
upper input nothing has happened so far when you just press s1 nothing has happened so far so let us try to follow so 6 is still at ground meaning the non inverting input is still at ground or rather the in uh, yeah the non inverting input is still at ground the inverting input is still at two thirds vcc so you have s equal to 1 and r equal to 1 so set pin is high meaning q will be high meaning q bar will be 0 it means that the output will be 1 so the output has gone high very good the output has gone high but when q bar becomes equal to 0 when q bar becomes equal to 0 right what will happen the transistor is switched off the discharge line is now off so what will happen is you would now have this line which is not connected and vcc would go through r1 and charge this capacitor there is no other way for vcc to go so the route taken are you able to see this or is it too zoomed out so the route taken will be vcc going through r1 going through the capacitor going to ground all right so when this happens when this happens what will happen now when you have sort of removed the switch it does anything change we have considered what happens when you switch on s1 but even when you release s1 when you release s1 when you release s1 the non inverting pin goes to ground okay the non inverting pin goes to ground right Yes, and sir. so the two states will again become like this uh, sorry sorry the non inverting pin will become high when you release s1 it will again go to the zero zero state okay when you remove s1 it will again go to the zero zero state and correspondingly the output will become high and you are continuously charging the capacitor okay so when the capacitor is being charged there are now two states there are now two things that we should always consider the capacitor is charging meaning pin number 6 voltage is going from ground to vcc it is going from ground towards vcc so when the voltage is increasing when the voltage is increasing there can be two two states one is when the voltage is less than 2/3 vcc and when the voltage exceeds 2/3 vcc okay so immediately the non inverting input is less than 2/3 vcc the capacitor is not yet charged so the voltage is less than 2/3 vcc whereas the second comparator because we have released switch 1 the inverting input is vcc whereas the non inverting is the reference 1/3 vcc so both become zero and we have no change in the output so the output remains high so the output still remains high why because the capacitor has not yet charged to more than 2/3 vcc when the non inverting input that is 0.6 when it goes greater than 2/3 vcc then the output r will change then only the output r will change because nothing has changed it still remains the same now the capacitor is charging because the output is one at a certain point the first comparator the non the inverting input look the first comparator the inverting input is always going to be the reference 2/3 vcc 
so it's always going to be the reference two thirds vcc but because the capacitor is continuously getting charged there will be a point at which it will exceed two thirds vcc after a certain rc time after a certain rc time okay the capacitor will reach a voltage which will just exceed two thirds vcc so when it exceeds two thirds vcc what will happen the non inverting input has exceeded the inverting input is that clear yes sir so what will be the output r will become 1 but what is the fate of the second comparator nothing has changed okay second comparator nothing has changed the inverting input is vcc non inverting input is 1/3 vcc nothing has changed so r becomes 1 s becomes 0 so reset pin so the reset pin becomes 1 and the set pin is 0 it means that q will become 0 because reset pin is high so q will become 0 q bar becomes 1 so the output is 0 now q bar equal to 1 okay when q bar becomes equal to 1 the transistor is again on the transistor which was off for such a long time it has again become on now what happens instead of vcc charging the capacitor what's going to happen is the capacitor will now find this root and discharge itself okay the capacitor can now discharge itself and so it will go back to its initial state so let us see how it looks like so we have the trigger the voltage across the capacitor and the output okay what do i mean the capacitor has instantly been shorted to ground do you realize that when this transistor becomes on the capacitor one of the legs of the capacitor which has been charged for so much time by the vcc has suddenly found ground has suddenly found ground so c1 will immediately charge okay so c1 Then, will immediately discharge right ah sorry sorry c1 will immediately discharge i was just checking whether you are attentive or not this is what all professors say okay because this entire line will become grounded this entire line will become grounded c1 will immediately discharge okay so now let us look at what the entire sequence of events that has transpired initially everything so the trigger was at vcc meaning pin 2 is the trigger pin okay let me show it to you pin 2 is the trigger pin so we are plotting the trigger voltage so this is what happens when the switch is i cannot see anything so yeah over here you have press the switch when you press the switch what happens the trigger goes to ground when you press the switch the trigger has gone to ground right so the trigger voltage goes to ground when the trigger voltage has gone to ground the output voltage has become equal to vcc the output voltage has become equal to i mean i have shown it larger but actually it is at this level but i don't i did not want to muddle up those so this is actually vcc don't be confused otherwise it would be a line like this and it would sort of confuse everyone now when the output line is on the discharge capacitor is uh, the discharge transistor is off okay over here discharge line is off vcc charges capacitor c1 so if i now plot the capacitor voltage it it go, rises okay it rises like this and the time taken for it to rise from 0 volt to 2/3 of vcc 
is equal to 1.1 times the RC time. What is the R in this? R is the charging capacitor, this R. Okay, that decides the charging time. So now the capacitor is charging. The moment it reaches two thirds of VCC, now this would exceed two thirds of VCC. And the moment it exceeds two thirds of VCC, then the R, that is the output of the first comparator goes high. The first comparator goes high and the output would drop to zero. Okay, the output has dropped to zero. At the same time, the discharge transistor has also become on. So the capacitor has shorted as a result of which suddenly the capacitor voltage will decay to zero. So this decay time is much faster. I mean, I'm drawing it as this, but actually it decays very, very fast. OK, so now the system will wait for another press of the switch. OK, the trigger has again gone high and this point is the same as this point. Now the system is again waiting for you to switch. The. Pull up resistor It's now waiting for you to give this input. So every time you press and release that switch, what will happen? It will give you a pulse. Look at the output. Look at the output. Every time you press the switch, you will get this. And it will stay on for this much amount of time. Can you imagine how useful this is? Each time you press a switch, each time you press a switch, what should happen? It should it should cause certain machine to stay on for maybe five seconds. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Yes, sir. And you may ask, but wait, I mean, why should I have these mechanical switches? I mean, that that's just dumb. I mean, well, you don't need to have mechanical switches. You don't need to have these mechanical switches. You can simply instead of having this switch what can you do we can connect it across an npn transistor and then you can drive the base with an arduino or whatever you like okay is that fine to everyone if it is unclear you look at this video once again this recording once again because it's captured through the screen. I I really hope it's going to be better quality than the webcam. Is it clear to everyone? At least the two states of operation monostable and pi stable. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. At the last moment it was clear before we were thinking like I was thinking like why how why is this called a timer? OK, OK. So good. I mean, um, before concluding this lecture, I'll just give you, I, I'll just show you how that circuit looks like. I mean, this we will discuss in the beginning of the next class. Okay. So, a stable we will discuss at the beginning of the next class because right now, if I try to discuss this, it will create more confusion than anything else. So, I'll just quickly. Save this, save as triple five circuitry, annotated. And so now you have two files. One is annotated, and one is not annotated. You can work it through. You can, I don't know. You can use journal to actually make changes in this file. Okay. So I'll quickly show you a circuit. I have made the a stable circuit. So let me stop sharing my screen. I hope the webcam is available is visible now. Is yes, it? sir. It's yeah. So let me go fetch the circuit one one. Thank you. 
so let's just get rid of the opera interrupter circuit mm -hmm. right so this is the circuit so you have the notch is placed upwards so you have one two three so that this is the signal out this this thing is the signal out this is the ground so i'll simply connect it to uh, five or twelve volts using my portable power supply and i've switched on the power supply this is at we can keep it at 5 volts so right now it's it's at 5 volts let me switch on the oscilloscope between this point and this point and be able to see the waveform are you able to see the waveform yes sir and if i would like to change the so vmax it says 4.8 volts and right now the input is at 4.8 volts okay if you look over here it's 4.8 volts so and so now let me do this let me in fact we can trigger it so let trigger menu so yeah so now, now we have triggered it so, and so the frequency it shows is 1.3 kilohertz i don't know i'm most likely you will not be able to read this it says 1.3 kilohertz okay so this particular circuit and and the reason why i mean this is important so this timer circuit is generating pulses for us at a frequency of 1.3 kilohertz and we can change this we can change this so let me just grab my tool to change it so the tool is nothing it's a flat screwdriver so i will simply change the resistance can you see the waveform growing in size yes sir yes sir so why do you think it is changing i'm i'm increasing the resistance it's a variable resistance i'm, I'm increasing it rc is increasing so basically rc is increasing okay so it's a very versatile circuit thankfully we have no nothing burning today <laughs> like the last class so yeah so in the next class we'll study this circuit and we will see how to use a uh, triple five uh, in conjunction with uh, a motor so we will see how to use the triple five circuit to create what is known as a pulse width modulation output and use it to drive a dc motor and we will also uh, start with the basics of uh, what is known as the edge bridge driver for a dc motor okay so edge bridge driver is an incredibly useful um, circuitry for delivering high currents and switchable polarities we will also look at some ic's which help in driving stepper motors and servo motors i mean so that's what we, we plan to do and finally operational amplifiers and pid controllers okay so with this we conclude this particular lab it's 3 hours and we had to go a bit slow but that's fine and it's better to understand things rather to just finish them up. so i'm going to switch off my oscilloscope switch off the oscilloscope switch off the power supply
stand up and go to the desk again. All right. So yes, so any doubts? Whatever we have done so far. All right, so I guess we can call it a day and I'll see you next week. I'm going to stop recording.